Hello, I'm Dr. Rawls. I'd like to talk to you about natural remedies for the neurological side of Lyme disease. Now, anybody that gets chronic Lyme disease does get some neurological symptoms, but some people have it more than others. And whether that's a combination of microbes or whether it's the person's genetic makeup that makes it more susceptible is really hard to define. But again, most anyone with Lyme symptoms does have some neurological symptoms. Um, at one point in time, I think everyone thought that the brain was very isolated from microbes, that microbes couldn't get in the brain. And we're now finding that that's untrue. Several studies in the past year, past couple of years, have shown that we actually do have a microbiome of our brain. We have everyone, healthy people, everyone in the world has low concentrations of microbes in the brain. Uh, so that's, that's something new. Nobody, nobody really ever suspected that, but it does appear to be the case. Um, so at one point, what they were saying about the neurological symptoms of Lyme is well, that it was just the general inflammation. But it's looking more like that the microbes actually do cross into the brain. And when I say microbes, I'm not talking about just Borrelia. I'm talking about mycoplasma and the whole range of different other microbes and the immune dysfunction associated with chronic Lyme disease allows these microbes in the brain to flourish. So it's not just Borrelia, it's all of the microbes there. So you get a, uh, a, a, a the, 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 these pro-inflammatory or microbes that cause inflammation start to flourish and they start to cause inflammation in the brain and that's driving all of these symptoms. Um, but it is really interesting that there also, there have been many cases where they've isolated specifically Borrelia out of various different kinds of cancers like glioblastoma multiforme, that's a cancer that John McCain had, not particularly in his case, but they found other cases. It's been isolated from Alzheimer's, uh, Parkinson's, quite a number of neurological conditions. Um, but that doesn't mean necessarily that Borrelia is causing those things. It means that it's part and parcel of this chronic immune disruption. So in my opinion, yeah, there are microbes there that are flourishing and driving this thing, and they're being allowed to flourish because the immune system has become disrupted. So the solution is, yes, you do have to suppress the microbes. Um, not necessarily with antibiotics because the antibiotics disrupt all of the microbes in your body and they hit your normal flora harder than it hits these microbes. I think herbs are a really nice solution for this. Um, there's so many herbs that we found that have good brain boosting activity. Uh, Bacopa, ashwagandha, Lion's mane is a, is a mushroom species that has been found to be particularly good for supporting uh, neurological and brain function, though other mushrooms, the adaptogenic mushrooms, reishi and cordyceps, also have been found to have benefits for neurological functions. So there are quite a number of different herbs out there that have an effect on the brain. So what are they doing? Well, some of the, what they're doing is they're balancing the immune system function so the immune system can work better. But they also have a suppressive effect on these microbes. So when you combine the antimicrobial herbs like andrographis, cat's claw, cat's claw is well known. It was used for, for ages in, in, uh, in the Amazon basin for treating or preventing dementia, treating dementia. So uh, most of our classic Lyme disease herbs like cat's claw and andrographis and Japanese knotweed, all of these things also were known to have some benefit for brain function. So you combine those antimicrobial herbs with the immune modulating herbs that are really good for brain like ashwagandha, lion's mane, cordyceps, uh, reishi mushroom, um, all of these things together have a really wonderful effect on the brain. Um, so it does take time. So neurological symptoms are some of the most stubborn. So it, 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 it can take months or even years of, of a steady, uh, comprehensive herbal therapy to get where you need to be. But gradually over time, 
What I found in my own recovery is all of the symptoms gradually did resolve. I had a full range of symptoms, everything from tingling and numbness throughout my body to burning feet to brain fog, uh, the, the full extent. And uh, it did take about two or three years of steady herbal therapy for all of those things to resolve completely. So especially when it comes to overcoming the neurological side of Lyme, patience and persistence is really important. And of course, you've got to support it with a healthy diet, good lifestyle, regular activity, stress reduction to uh, neutralize that overactive sympathetic nervous system, that fight or flight response. So all of these things are working together to balance that microbiome in the brain. And I think that's very important to recognize that you're not going to eliminate all of these microbes from the brain. We, again, we now know that the brain does have its own microbiome. So what we're trying to do is balance those and corral those pro-inflammatory microbes so they're not generating inflammation. So we're reducing inflammation and resolving the symptoms. So ultimately that is going to get you where you need to be as far as a symptom-free state. If this information is helpful, uh, please check out my, raw, my website, rawlsmd.com. Lots of great information about in there. I also uh, published a book, Unlocking Lyme, that's an Amazon bestseller for Lyme disease. Lots of great information about overcoming the neurological symptoms of Lyme disease in the book. Um, while you're at the website, sign up for our newsletter and uh, yeah, keep tuning into these videos. There's lots of good information coming your way. Take care. Thanks for watching this video. Please take the time to leave a comment below. And while you're there, uh, ask me any questions or if you have topics that you'd like to hear about, uh, pass those along. Um, and please subscribe to my channel so you'll have these videos coming your way regularly. Thank you.